Back in 1967, computer animation was new, and a young scientist began his work in the field. Dr. James Blinn. When I grew up, I was always interested in math and physics. Uh, my parents, however, were artists, art teachers. And when I went to school and first discovered computers, fairly early on, I discovered that computers could be used to make pictures. And this just seemed like the obvious thing to do. Dr. Blinn, now of the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, is one of the early pioneers in the field of computer animation. Working with fine artists, scientists, and choreographers, Jim Blinn initiated significant advances in both the techniques and quality of computer animation by helping to develop new software tools. Well, when I started out, I did my own tools because Partly there weren't tools available, and partly because that was where I came from, was the computer end of things. Jim Blinn used these tools when he created the animation for the Voyager flyby movies. From my point of view, I always viewed the movies as primarily a more educational sort of thing. It was not really a science tool so much as a mechanism of taking the data that the scientists had come up with and portraying it to the, the world at large so they could understand what was going on. The motivation behind his work is communication. In order to really understand something, you need to have lots of different ways of looking at it. You need to have somebody explain it to you, see some animation of what goes on, do some of it yourself, think about it and reinvent part of it yourself. All these techniques need to be there in order to really learn something. And I'm providing one of them, which is the animation. In the mid-70s, Dr. Blinn created these now classic images to show the evolution of computer graphics including one of his contributions, texture mapping. The process of wrapping a picture around an object to simulate what surfaces in the real world look like. After that, Dr. Blinn created Blobby Man, one of the first realistic computer animations of a human figure. Blobby Man was used to demonstrate the power of a then newly developed rendering technique. Back when we started out doing this, there were maybe like 50 people in the country who knew this. It was like an obscure hobby that we never believed that a whole lot of other people would really care about. Nowadays, you can go down to the supermarket and get fan magazines for computer graphics. And it's astounding that we've been kind of poking away at our terminals and having a good time, and then we look up and discover there's all these people looking over our shoulders now and, 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 and wanting to do it themselves and, and, and finding that it's interesting.